So, 10th Crusade, I haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, I've been looking at what's been going on in France, and I guess uh, war it is then. Um, okay, so with what's going on in France, they basically got an election coming up with Marine Le Pen, and it looks like she's, they, they say she's going to take the first round. I'm not exactly 100% sure how French voting goes, but uh, she's, they say she's most likely going to take the first round. Uh, and whatever, and there's a good chance she might take the second round, especially with all these Muslim riots that have been going on for the last past week. And they, these things flare up, you know, they pretty much go on all summer long throughout France. They burn cars, smash shops, or whatever. And that riots come in on, and it's not just the Muslims, they're, they're, it's the radical left. In France, like, everybody's very hypersensitive, it seems, and they riot about just about anything. Um, and they're going to be passing a law, they want to pass a law, so that uh, police can basically open fire after two warnings on radical protesters that you know either are injuring people or whatever. So that means they're going to be shooting people dead in the streets. It means they're going to be shooting Muslims dead in the streets, and that's going to cause a civil war like that. Uh, there's no doubt about that. The other thing is is that uh, the EU is trying to pass a law to allow all these migrants to vote. So basically, in the next election, that's what they'll use to overthrow Le Pen. But what the other option is is that as soon as these police, I'm sure these police officers are like yes, give us that right to shoot these people. You know what I mean? They're looking forward to it. They're going to do it. You know, uh, this riot came in. They said there was a bunch of French police that took down a migrant and they sodomized him with a belly bat or something like that. Now whether this is true or not, I don't know. Um, but even so, protest is one thing. Destroy the city is another. Uh, again, something like 1,800 cars per year, between 600 and 1,800 cars per year are burnt by in by the Muslims in the Sharia Nogo zones. And there's over 700 Sharia Nogo zones, as they call them in the States. Uh, these are all pre predominantly Muslim people. Whether it has something to do with Sharia or not, it doesn't matter. It's a Muslim-dominated area. And these are basically very violent areas. The police can't go into them. They got them in, they got them in the UK. They got them... Uh, uh, they don't really have them too much in Canada, but they're going to show up here too. Uh, and when they do, trust me, the Canadian public isn't going to tolerate that too long. Uh, we're different. We're a little bit different here in Canada. Um, you know, it, it's just, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're not going to tolerate it too long. Uh, I, I just, my hunch feeling, my hunch, my hunch feeling. Um, the thing, and in Sweden, I, again, it's just as crazy. So, but getting back to France, like, it, it's just getting to the point where uh, if they can get martial law in, I mean, they're in a state of emergency. You've got police all over the place. They're building a, going to be building like a gate around the Eiffel Tower if they haven't built it yet, just in case of terrorist attacks. They've banned trucks at, at any sort of parades or anything like that. Basically, they did this here in New Year's Eve in Ottawa, and this is the first time in our history that we've had to do this, where they basically blocked off all the streets and blocked it with trucks so trucks couldn't get through so that terrorist attacks couldn't happen. Um, you know, it, it's to the point where, yeah, the crusade is about to start. I do think France will probably be one of the first areas where the crusade starts. Uh, the first crusader battle is basically when you have not so much the government, but the populace. Uh, you got Muslims on one side and patriots are on the other side of, of some sort. Uh, and basically, you're going to have a body count on both sides. And th those will be the first crusade battles. They haven't taken place yet, but I'm, you know, pretty sure it's going to happen pretty soon. Uh, France, I don't think, can go much further. Uh, it's either fight back or be conquered. That, that's pretty much where they're at. Now, they're afraid of Le Pen winning because she wants to actually deport these people. And they should. They have, you know, every country should have the right to deport those who don't integrate or whatever. Um, and the thing about it is, it's very simple. If they can get the martial law, they can cancel the election. They can cancel the election and Marine Le Pen won't win. Now, what they did in the last one is they took the votes, the left took the votes, uh, and gave all their votes to Hollande so he would win. That way, otherwise, Le Pen probably would have won in the last election. So it's kind of like, okay, fair enough. Uh, but once they do that, like once they go down that route, uh, and they go down the martial law route, uh, it won't matter anyway. There will be such rioting from all sides. At that point, you will have your civil war. Uh, it's pretty much, to me, and I don't think the French military and the French... Uh, police are going to stay on the side of the governments. I think, I, you know, once those penguins start jumping off the iceberg, the rest are going to follow in pretty quickly, and, and you're going to see probably, you know, you know, basically a, a French military coup. I wouldn't doubt it. I think this is why Hollande is step, stepping down. He's like, I'm not running in the next election. Uh, I think that guy's getting ready to get, get out of Dodge, you know what I mean? Uh, because if they go to, go to that route, at that point, it, it's the only alternative is war.
not that I'm calling for it, but I'm saying when you see it happen, don't be surprised. You know what I mean? Like, it, you know, it's the, the governments around the world have failed everybody because of globalism. And, you know, globalism, it could have worked if they wouldn't have done the, the, the mass. You can have globalism without mass immigration, but mass immigration can't be sustained anywhere. Uh, the argument, there's no arguments for mass immigration. There are, there are no arguments uh, other than the Democrats, the Democrats get voters for putting people on welfare and getting them addicted to welfare, and the, right, the, the, the conservatives get cheaper labor. So that's the only reason why they want mass immigration. The people don't want mass immigration. They don't want to lose their culture. They don't want to lose, you know, they don't mind doing trade with other countries. That's fine. But they don't want to, they don't want to lose their country, their homelands. And that's, you know, that much, mind you, this is done on purpose too. The migrant crisis pretty much comes on the heels of the globalists, which, you know, George Soros, Henry Kissinger, Zygmunt Brzezinski, Rothschilds, Rockefellers, uh, the 14 Jew major prominent Jewish groups out there, like the ADL and stuff like that. And uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, you have them, and so you see the Zionist faction of it, uh, the uh, what you call it, the Israeli lobby. You see that they're all, you know, oh, we need more, uh, more mass immigration, more mass immigration. We've got to be welcoming to, you know, there, there's a difference between being welcoming, uh, and there's a big difference between, uh, you know, generosity and being taken advantage of. And right now, these migrants are taken advantage. Of. Oh, but they're just sweet innocent refugees. Obviously not. If the crime rates are shooting through the roof in Sweden, the rape epi epidemic there is just like they're raping people in the middle of the street in broad daylight. Uh, and then, of course, assaults are just you know through the roof. And this is happening everywhere in Europe. And the thing about this is, is that you know, again, when do the people snap? I, I think France is probably the canary in the coal mine in that sense. Uh, but I still say the big crusade battle takes place in the UK. Uh, here in Canada, I think we're just going to see a rise in xenophobic attacks. Uh, I think that's going to be the first one. Don't be surprised if you see, and I'm not calling for this, but don't be surprised if you see people getting shot at at the border. Uh, the, 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 I was holding off this uh, 10th Crusade video until I got more information of the story that just kind of seemed to have went away. Um, I talked about the Polytechnique uh, massacre back in the 1989, uh, I believe it was 89, where the guy walked into a Polytechnique, uh, Ecole Polytechnique and massacred 14 women and, you know, wounded a whole bunch of others. And that, they, they drink, they, they, every year they have a vigil, they, they, they uh, you know, the, the anti-gun control, the anti, the gun control lobby in Canada is pretty much spearheaded by them uh, and stuff like that. And it goes and it goes and it goes. And they just, you know, feminism, oh, we need to fight the violence against women. And they, they just, they run this one into the ground. They've been doing it for decades now, or well, I guess, you know, <laughs> about 20 years now, so two decades. And, and they won't let it go, because it was the, one of the biggest massacres in Canada. And that's fine. You know, most people don't have a problem with people bringing that up, so it doesn't happen again. But this shooting at the mosque, in, 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 which this mosque has a lot of, you know, it's got ties to Muslim Brotherhood. Uh, it, it's, you know, been attacked before and stuff like that. But there's a lot going on there. And, of course, you have some altruistic people. Again, people who don't live around the people that are creating all this problem. So they're like, uh, you know, these gated community liberals, and you have the same problem in Sweden and in France and stuff like that. They live in the countryside. Oh, no, we're for mass immigration. But they don't have to live amongst these people. But the people that live amongst these people, man, trust me, they're, they're singing a different tune. And, you know, in Sweden, when, uh, like in Sweden, like uh, people have like a normal home, and a lot of people have these little red beach houses at, at the little cottages. And when the government came, started taking away those, say, we're going to fill those with refugees, people are like, oh, what, that's mine, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's funny, when, when, when it hits you in the pocket, that's when you care, right? Uh, so, yeah, anyway. So, stuff like that's going on. But the thing is, is here in Canada, we've got this massacre that took place in the mosque, and technically it is the largest uh, killing of Muslims in Canada in our history, you know, six Muslims in, in, in one day, uh, that's definitely, it's the biggest massacre. Now, that said, you think uh, if uh, this guy was a white supremacist, at this point, do we even believe that? Because the only evidence they've showed was that apparently, and I can't find this guy's Facebook, I guess uh, they took down his Facebook page, because I wanted to go through it just, but this guy, the video clips they showed, this guy seems more of a leftist for the little video clips that I've seen of him. And the thing is, is if this guy did it for the white supremacy and all that stuff, then if that's true, I want to hear, hear his plea. What is this guy saying? You don't hear any updates on, on it at all. It, it, the story just went away. And that makes it very suspicious. That means that either the story is a fake, so they found some, a, a scapegoat 
to go along with it so that uh, a plea bargain could happen for these refugees uh, for whatever because at first it was there were two two uh, you know Muslims that went in shot up the place yelling all at bar and then when they, the RCMP caught these guys and apparently there's eyewitnesses that said there were three people Maybe, maybe there's something more going on there. We don't know. And then all of a sudden, no, those two guys were just witnesses and whatever, and they ran because they you know, ran for their lives. Whatever. Okay. Uh, some of the theories out there, like Gavin McGinnis was saying, he goes, the police, are, because the story just went away so fast, he goes, uh, it's most likely that uh, it was a plea bargain made. You know, his cop friends are like telling him, oh, there's, that's, it's, if it was a real deal, they would be, again, all over the news. We'd be, you know, the, the poor Muslims, poor Muslims, poor Muslims, we'd be hearing that all day, 24-7. Now, I'm not calling all Muslims terrorists or whatever, but people are getting fed up with this defend them at all costs. No, we've got to look at it objectively and say, look, there, there's a problem within that community, massively. And because of that, we got to, you know, yes, we're going to have to discriminate when they come in. We're going to have to vet them when they come in. We're going to have to be vigilant. We don't know which ones we can trust and which ones we can't. That's the thing. So out of... 1.2 or 1.3 Muslims in the world, about 50, 10 to 15 percent of them are radical. And when you have when you have them flooding across your borders, when you don't know who they are, you know, are they a part of that 10 or 15 percent? We don't know. Uh, so suspicion, I think, is that's why the suspicion is there. And of course, Bill uh, or sorry, Memorandum M103 comes out the anti-Islamophobia law, which a lot of people there's a lot of pushback on that, which is a good sign, which is a very good sign. And it's coming from the MPs. It's not only coming from the MPs. But the Canadian public, they're like, no, 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 no. We see it for what it is. It's a slippery slope. It's not law. Uh, it, it's basically the memorandum to get the laws that will, again, create the slippery slope for more Sharia compliant in, compliancy in Canada. That's how you have to look at it. And when you look at it like that, then you understand when they use vague term Islamophobia, well, what does that mean? You know what I mean? And that's what most of the people are saying. Well, what does that mean specifically? You know, like, uh, like what does that entail? So when you start... Law, you know, throwing fines at people and locking people up. What does that entail? That's why people are, are, are concerned about it. So, yeah, so that, that one got torpedoed pretty fast. Hopefully, uh, obviously the liberals would pass it like that. Uh, but if there's enough backlash, they'll, they'll step away from it. You know, they'll quit. But they're going to keep it on the back burners. And it's funny how this bill was, uh, this memorandum was ready to go the next day. Kind of funny. Um, but anyway, getting back to that, this Bisonette guy, we don't know anything about him. So the mainstream media says, well, he had references to Le Pen and Donald Trump. He liked their Facebook pages or whatever on his Facebook page. Therefore, he's a Nazi white supremacist, and that's what this murder was about. Case solved. Scooby-Doo can get a Scooby Snacks. We can go home now. Okay? But the, the police haven't made a statement yet. They haven't said what the motive was. Maybe this was something to do with the guy's schooling. I mean, one of the guys murdered was uh, an, you know, an Iranian uh, teacher. Okay, fine. Uh, maybe the guy got, was, you know, one of these lefties that, okay, well, I was failing my class and, and I'm going to go get payback on this guy and I shot six people. In the, maybe it's something like that. It has nothing to do with anything. And if that's the case, which I'm hoping, then, then that's not so bad. But on the other hand, in Canada, remember, we're behind the times of Sweden. We're behind the times of France and Germany. We're even behind the times of the States when it comes to mass immigration and illegal immigration. There's always been illegal immigration to Canada, but it's usually we're talking five, 6,000 people a year, which usually when they're caught, they usually either go to the refugee board or they go to the immigration board and they, they either register legally or they get deported. And under the Harper government, they deported like six or 9,000 people. <laughs> you know, uh, most of them little old ladies and grandpas that from you know, people who wanted to do family unification uh, the, the illegal way. That type of thing. So, yeah, okay. And, and you know what? We don't need to be bringing grandma and grandpa here. Again, the, the easiest way to get rid of these people is just, sure, you come into the country illegally and you're not getting an ounce of welfare. We're not going to feed you. We're not going to shelter you. We're not going to do anything. It sounds cold and heartless, but it forces people to do it the right way. And the other thing is, is the people that are legitimate that die trying to get here, that, that enables that, you know. So you say, no, you're going to come here through legitimate purposes. If you come here through human trafficking, we're not going to take you. If you come here legitimately, that means a lot of people won't be able to come here. Sure, that's sad, that's tra tragic. But at least then the deaths of people trying to, you know, so desperately to get here, they'll find other means. And trust me, if they're, they're desperate enough, they'll find other means to get here. And however they do it, they're going to do it. But they'll do it legally. And that's what, that's what Canada needs to force. But, again, if... What we're seeing from a Canadian's point of view is, again, whether you're on the left of the issue or the right of the issue, we're all looking at the same thing. 
And we're seeing Sweden is burning. We're seeing France is burning. We're seeing Germany is burning. We're seeing Greece and Spain, <laughs> you know, all that. And Italy are just burning right now with these freaking migrants. And people don't want it anymore. They don't want those migrants. We, we, nobody wants them. And we're looking at our laws and saying they need to change. The thing in Canada is because we're behind the times, we might be one of the first to react in certain ways. Now, this BCNet guy, if he is a part of what they're talking about, they did a... Now, mind you, every, the, the rise in Nazis since Trump has been... Uh, you know, everybody's a Nazi. If you're, if you're slightly right of Karl Marx, you're a Nazi. <laughs> you're, you know, and Nazis are left, by, by the way. Again, people don't even know what the term means. But anyway... Um, we got the violent left out there that is running defense for these migrants, but they're, 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 they're just a vocal minority. The thing is, is that if the people band together like they're banding together here against uh, Bill uh, Memorandum M103, because we know that's a stepping stone to something worse. And hate speech laws, all that stuff, blasphemy laws, we have them in Canada. They need to go. They need to go because those things are what allows the radical, uh, you know. And the thing is, is I'm also listening to Muslim people as well. For example, now mind you, social justice warriors, I usually refer to them as useful idiots, but the operative word is that they can be useful. So the only feminists I ever really see on the planet, like true feminists, are Arab women. And, you know, again, because I don't hate anybody. I don't hate Muslims. I don't like, I don't, I, I don't agree with the ideology uh, and stuff like that. And the radical Muslims, well, obviously, <laughs> I don't give a shit if you care. You know, call me racist, Zeke Hale, I don't care. I hate those people because I know they're going to destroy my country. So I don't care about them. And when the Battle of Ottawa takes place, I will be there, you know, because at a, at a thousand people a month ra coming into my country, we're going to get, we're going to get problems. We're going to get problems. And because uh, we already have the problems, we're already seeing the problems. Because the problems that happen in Sweden, the problems that happen in all throughout Europe with these migrants, it's, it, wherever they go, the, those problems are going to go. So it's just how many do you bring in, how big does the problem get, right? So that's the thing about vetting people. Integration is the most important part of uh, uh, immigration and at a quarter million people per year not all of them are Muslims coming in mind you but you can't and soon to be half a million per year not all you, you can't integrate that uh, you just can't and we're going to be bringing in out of that uh, 120 to 150 uh, thousand of these refugees next year how are they going to get here is the government going to be paying the, their way of 150,000 people and they're putting them on welfare like they're completely unsustainable anyway so I'm listening to this lady from Iran or whatever, uh, and she's like out there uh, protesting uh, M103. And she's at one of these Muslim Brotherhood funded Islamic, uh, I think it was Muslim Brotherhood funded, but anyway, one of those kind of uh, places that, that are basically in favor of M103. And she's out there protesting, and of course this was on the rebel media. Now, mind you, the rebel media has their bias because they're, you know, they're basically owned by Jews, so they're going to be anti-Muslim no matter what. But anyway, the, the lady, like, she's like freaking out. She goes, no, you can't support, Canadians can't support this. She goes, I come from there. Like, I've seen people beheaded. I've seen the blasphemy laws. I know what it's like to live under that kind of tyranny of, of, uh, of uh, Sharia. And it's like, okay, you know, we should listen to this lady, you know. That there is a true feminist, you know. Again, these these fake feminists that we got, these third wave radical feminists. These, these people are just idiots, but they're not useful on our side. They're useful on the other side. So this other lady, you could call her a social justice warrior. That's fine, uh, but you know, even at that, it's like, you know, it's like, uh, uh, you know, she's not she's not lying to you, you know. And there's another lady. Um, I can't think of her YouTube page, but anyway, they they had her on Red Ice one time. She's an Iranian guy. She's uh, Astro Zorian. Um, so like, kind of like before. Islam really overtook again, uh, you know, with the you know the CIA, CIA coup in in, in, Israel, in Iran, you know, uh, removing the Shah, whatever, and all that stuff back in the seventies. Before that, like Iran was quite westernized in a lot of ways. The women were, walked around in bikinis. Same in Lebanon. I mean, the women walked around in bikinis. I mean, I don't know how any religion could be against women walking around in bikinis. You know, it's like uh, uh, that type of thing. So. Um, uh, you know, now women have to wear burkinis. And I don't know if you see it. Basically, it's like a burka. Like, I don't know how these women don't drown just from the weight of their freaking, uh, you know, their burkinis, you know. Uh, that type of thing. And and she was saying, like, she was uh, in the States, and she goes, the immigration is coming in so fast that, you know, she, she was in a community when she moved there when she was, like, I think she said she was, like, 10 or 15. And, she, you know, she was happy to get out of Iran. She's like, she'd witnessed the worst of the worst, right? 
Uh, and it was like either they leave or she, they were going to be dead. And she was a vocal person, so she, she goes, she goes, I would be dead there if I would have stayed. Uh, and then she goes, one day she's walking around in one of these little food markets or whatever, and all of a sudden she gets a flashback like she's in Iran because there's so much mass immigration of Muslims coming in. And she, like, it just put a chill down her spine. She's like, oh, my God, you know, this, you know, this can't go on because she knows what it'll lead to. And she's right, you know. And, again, there's people around the world that can't look at, like, they can't look at that stuff. They, they, they turn a blind eye to it, and you get blindsided by it. But the thing about being in Canada is we're looking at this and we're saying, hey, wait a minute, we kind of see this coming. Let's stop it now. But with the Trudeau government and the NDP, basically, those two can veto. Uh, the, the, there's enough of them. Uh, the, the, the Trudeau government has a majority to begin with. Uh, again, a lot of people voted for Trudeau. I think the farmers voted for Trudeau because uh, of the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership. Now, meanwhile, you know, because the way Trudeau was selling it, it was he wasn't going to do whatever for, you know, he wasn't going to allow the Trans-Pacific Trade Partnership to go through. Now, mind you, they can't pass that thing fast enough, right? Even though the, the states are no longer on board. So it's like, well, okay, without the states, it's kind of, you know, whatever. So that there, I think a lot of people just, they didn't realize what they were voting for, but I, I don't think Trudeau will get in. And I think in the third, by the third year, we're going into the second year of his, his, his prime minister. And he's pretty much right on schedule of screwing up the country. Like I said, you know, the cost of living is going through the roof. Uh, people aren't happy with mass migration, um, that type of thing uh, for political correctness. Uh, political correctness is dying everywhere in the world. Yes, Canadians are less vocal than, than everybody else, but there's, there, there's that kind of snap that Canadians do throughout history that it, nobody ever sees it coming. And I think this attack, and some of the other indications, again, uh, Pam Palmer, this lady's First Nations, and she's like social justice warrior leftist, but she is a very native nationalist. That, that's one thing. She's completely leftist. Other, you know, she's even probably linked to George Soros to a degree. But even women like her are turning on Trudeau. So if she's turning on Trudeau, the native communities are turning on Trudeau. Uh, they're like, you promised something that you're not delivering. Now, these native communities, I'm only, I'm only curious to see what they're going to end up doing to the Muslims. Uh, because they're seeing all these Muslims getting all this free stuff coming in and being treated like gold and everything like that. Meanwhile, they've got uh, reserves that don't even have running water on it, like Atahuapiscat. I mean, that place is just a disaster. Uh, and in a first world country, a complete shame. There is no reason to be that. Now, mind you, the conservatives tried to help them out with 90, $91 million. Nobody knows where that money went, and they don't have running water. So, yeah, there's got to be some stuff done there, too. But you're not going to get that through the... Yeah, Trudeau basically... You know, he does a lot of gesture things to make it look like, you know, if he would back what he was saying he was doing, he could keep the natives. But the natives are starting to figure out that he's just pandering. He's not, he's not really going to do anything for them. So we're starting to see that alliance crack. And that alliance cracks, it's only a matter of time before the, 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 the natives turn on these migrants. They're going, to be, they're going to be getting, if they're not pissed at them already. Natives are the most nationalist people we have in Canada, <laughs> trust me. 500 years ago, uh, you had 600 different native languages. There's still a lot of them uh, around today. And like, you couldn't beat it out of them. You couldn't kill it out of them. You couldn't genocide it out of them. These people are nationalists. And, you know, fair enough. You know, I have no problem with that being part native. Uh, you know, you keep your culture. And they're even bringing back some of the cultures that they've lost. So that tells you they're very, very, very nationalist. And the thing is, is with them, you have to keep them at bay by honoring the treaties and stuff like that. And you can't honor the treaties if you don't have the money to honor the treaties. Uh, so, again, Trudeau's painting himself into a corner to the point where everybody's going to be so broke. Uh, you know, again, the, like this kind of apology tour that Trudeau's on, it, it's good optics, don't get me wrong, it's a brilliant tactic. It's even better than Putin's tactic of uh, the Q&As that Putin does. Uh, but the optics are still... You know, they, they only go so far. I mean, there are people there that are putting his feet to the fire and stuff like that, even though he kind of goes into more liberal writings to, uh, uh, to do these things. But there's still, even in his own writings, not everybody, like, there's a lot of people kissing his ass because they have no idea what's going on in the real world. But there's a lot of people that are, no, they're waking up. They, 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 they understand what's going on. And they see him as the ultimate globalist. I mean, he takes his marching orders pretty much from George Soros. Which George Soros, I think, I don't think George Soros makes it to the end of the year. I'm not making any threats. I'm just saying he's got way too many enemies. Uh, there's just not enough protection for this guy. Uh, he's just not, he, he's not going to make it. <laughs> Double down as much as he wants, he's not going to make it. Um, again, if there was a time for a nationalist government candidate, now's the time. We've got about two and a half years to the next election. 
I'm up for it. I'll never be pres uh, prime minister. I get that because you know, you know, they did barbecue me on my uh, YouTube uh, statements and stuff like that. But I'd love to be a big part of it and setting it up. And I've got a great plan. I've got a great ideas. I need people who know the government. They know, and we need a majority government right from the get-go, to get rid of the globalism. We start with an economic plan. That's the problem with nationals is they start with a populism plan. No, you use the economic plan to promote the populism plan. You have to do it that way or else it'll fail. Again, if Marine Le Pen comes in, what's her economic plan? You know what I mean? That type of thing. Uh, economic plan, get rid of migrants. Yeah, okay, well, that's austerity when you look at it. Uh, in Canada, if we cut off mass immigration, for at least a decade anyway, you know, uh, just to let people integrate. Because the people that are here, if they're not doing anything wrong, you, you can't fault them, uh, that type of thing. But you would also don't need to change the demographics. You change the demographics, you change the culture. So if you want to protect the culture, you protect the demographics. It's that simple. Uh, and you can do that with a nationalist government. So that would be one of the big things. The other thing is, you know, restore the Bank of Canada. Put a huge emphasis on small businesses. Make it as easy to open a business as possible. Uh, entrepreneurship and small business. Never mind globalism. Never mind the... Uh, to get rid of too big to fail. Uh, give tax breaks to the Fortune 500 companies, sure. So they hire people, but in, put in a fair wage system and also put in a mandatory uh, uh, profit sharing. That way these Fortune 500 companies can't just hoard the billions of dollars themselves. They have to put it down to their employees. I've worked for a company that did something like this and it was fantastic. Um, so the, the economic plan is, is the first step to get the populism plan to go. So that's what I need. I need people... Uh, you know, uh, even if I can't get together in a big group of people, it uh, doesn't mean we can't, you know, people who are better online at setting up, it only takes 270 some odd signatures to create an, uh, a government party in Canada. But we can use the media to get, the, 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 the social media to get our platform out there. It would cost us next to nothing, which would impress the Canadian public saying that we ran our campaign cheaper than Donald Trump ran his <laughs> and cheaper than any Canadian party has ever ran theirs. But we need people who know the legal system and everything like that so that we, can, we don't get in there. Okay, we're going to do all this. Oh, well, you can't because there's uh, a clause here. There's a constitutional challenge here. We don't want to be binded up in the courts for the rest of our lives. But there are some things that we can remove right away. One is mass immigration, which is about $23 billion a year. And it's a, it's a big issue. If it's this big of an issue for me, I can't imagine it's a huge issue for the rest of the country. And I can only imagine the issues it is for the people in Europe. Uh, immigration is the number one issue in the world. It's not LGBTQ and, and whatever, and P who soon to be pedophile if they get their way. Um, no, it's immigration is the number one issue in the world. It, that, that's, I think, blatantly obvious. Uh, and mass immigration from Muslim countries is a huge part of that. Again, nobody talks about the, um, you know, the, uh, what you call it, the uh, migrants from, you know, uh, you know, pick, pick a non-Muslim country. Like, you don't, you don't hear from... Uh, we don't, the, 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 did you hear about the big riot of the Vietnamese last week? No, neither did I. Uh, I haven't heard about Vietnamese people and doing anything, <laughs> you know, other than opening up restaurants. You know, like, that, that's, that's, all, that's all these people do. Uh, the China, the issue with China is the links to the Chinese Communist government. And once the Chinese have enough mass immigration, then they usually, what they do is, once they get a majority, then they push for the Communist rule. And again, BC will eventually become a... A Chinese province, uh, you know, if, if they, they're at 27 percent uh, Chinese, uh, of their population is Chinese. So when that gets to 50 percent plus one, they're going to start demanding <laughs> over there. You know what I mean? That's the problem with that kind of mass immigration. Other than that, you don't hear from them. You know, they, they keep to their own. And that's fine. And the Chinese people that, I, that I've ever met, uh, even the ones off the boat, they tend to integrate very well because they're business-oriented people. Uh, doesn't mean there's no crime with them or they're saints or whatever, but they're, they're whatever. Uh, for example, in the States, the lowest uh, immigrant community for crime is, is the, uh, what you call it, the, the Puerto Ricans. Like, they don't commit crime. Like, they, well, I'm sure some of them do. But they, they're so afraid to be deported back to their own countries that, you know, and that, that's, that's the thing you could, as a bargaining chip, do to, end, to keep this madness from going too crazy, is, look, you break the law in our country, we, regardless of your... Uh, what the status is in your other country, you go back to country of origin. You know, if you do a criminal act, you go to jail first, then back to country of origin. Right now, Donald Trump is clearing the jails of, of illegals. Okay, this person, okay, they did a, maybe a misdemeanor. Deport them. Why keep them in jail? It's cheaper to deport them. Uh, and something like 680 people have been deported under Trump so, so far. That's good. <laughs> you know, but that also, it sets up the red flag and there's going to be a lot of people that will just self-deport. And that's what you really want to do is put in the conditions to, to get self-deportation to be practiced. Now, that said, 
coming back to here to Canada, the reason why I'm bringing Canada so much in on this is because the stuff that we're seeing now in Canada, I wasn't expecting to see for about eight to ten years. Uh, two to four years, you're going to have civil war within, probably starting with in France, uh, you're going to have civil wars, you know, basically a cruise the the Tenth Crusade will take place. And a lot of people may be jumping in onto this video for the first time. What are you talking about Tenth Crusade? Well, you have to listen to the Muslim migrants talk about how they want a one-world caliphate. Uh, again, there's no shortage of these radical jihadis out there. And the thing is, is a lot of them aren't radical, radical jihadis. These are people that are already in Europe saying, we're going to you know, impregnate your women. It's all these imams. And they're, like, they're just like, you know, and they practice, the, the, the stuff they're practicing, these radical imams in, in uh Europe. Well, they're also here in Canada. And one thing the lady pulled out, she said, look, this is what they're talking about uh, in Montreal. This is what they're talking about. Uh, and you can listen to them. They talk about their, their caliphate. They talk about how the world will be dominated by Islam. <laughs> you know, like, they're, they're not hiding it. They're not, they don't lie. Just use their own words against them. They're like, you know, like, you're, you know, we're coming for the crusader nations. You can't say it any simpler than that. It's a crusade. <laughs> you know, I know, I know, we have to wait till the mainstream media tells you it's a crusade. Uh, if you wait for that, I mean, you're going to be waiting a long time before they tell you something honestly. Um, I'm not saying all the media lies, but true, uh, you know, lie by omission, half truths, uh, stuff like that. It, it really, no, people, the truth, good or bad, truth at all costs. Yes, it hurts and it, it's damaging in the beginning, but in the long run, everybody wins, including the Muslims. Um, that type of thing. Everybody, you know, honesty will will all win under honesty. Uh, it's, because it just it, it doesn't allow the bullshit like this to take place. So eight to ten years, I think we're we're going to be seeing the problems like we're seeing in Sweden uh, at current levels of mass immigration, and then ten to fifteen years we have a civil war in Canada if it doesn't kick off here first. <laughs> Hear me out on this again. It would be completely unexpected globally from Canada, but don't if this shooting at the mosque was the canary in the coal mine, and apparently the rise of nationalism in Quebec here is like, it's across the country. We have soldiers of Odin all over the country. I think it started out west first, and now they're, they're in Montreal, they're everywhere, and they're starting to clash. They're, we're starting our clash here. Uh, it's just, they, um, they, they, they're not covering it. Uh, they, they call everything a xenophobic attack nowadays, and everybody's racist, and everybody's a Nazi, or whatever. But the, the attacks are going to become real. Uh, again, it's a Canadian, the thing, especially amongst us older stock Canadians, we have a bullshit meter that we don't, you know, and there's, there's a bullshit to a punch before you get a punch in the face. Like, you can bullshit the meter to about, maybe to about there, and we'll tolerate it. You go to about here, you know, we're, we're, we're about to snap, and here, bang, you're getting a shot in the nose, you know what I mean? That's, that's the Canadian response. Nothing, 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 hold her tongue, hold her tongue, hold her tongue, fuck you! <laughs> Fit in or fuck off, you know what I mean? That type of thing. And I think that's, that's what's going to happen in Canada. I'm not calling for it, but if, when you see it happen, I mean, I'm just the messenger, you know what I mean? So, if this guy, again, the crazies do snap first, if he did it for that reason, as an anti, uh, you know, we'll call it as an Islamophobic attack, if it was legitimately that, but we don't know this yet. We don't know this because the police, they're not making any comments. I mean, again, the second largest uh, massacre in Canadian history um, or one of the second largest massacre, I think it's the second largest massacre in Canadian history, modern history. Uh, you know, we're talking within the last pay, past hundred years or so. Uh, then, well, maybe with the exception of Louis Riel. <laughs> okay, okay, well, within the last past fifty years, you know, mo modern records uh, type thing, nineteen sixty-three and, 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 and earlier. So we'll say nineteen fifty to now. Um, it's the largest, you know, mass shooting in a, in a long time. Uh, okay, uh, then if it was done for that reason, and we have a rise in nationalist groups and to the point where some of them in Quebec are getting ready to become political parties, uh, again, yes, this story did come out on the CBC as a hit piece uh, last week, the week before, talking about the rise in nationalism everywhere in, in, in Canada, but particularly in Quebec, but we've already had the sovereigntist movement in Quebec. Now, what I'm saying is we need to get out ahead of those guys because... We don't want another sovereignist nationalist group. In, that, that won't help Canada. We need a Canadian first, all Canada nationalist group, uh, basically a federalist nationalist group uh, versus a sovereignist nationalist group. <laughs> because if not, it just fractions off. But these guys, these, and the thing is, these guys are ex-military, they're uh, that type of thing. Um, so these guys, they're, they're organizing already. And they're, they're, they're big. Now in Quebec, you have a lot of misfits here. You've got biker gangs, like uh, the Hell's Angels, 
uh, formerly known as the Rock Machine, formerly known as the Hell's Angels, but they, I think they've outlawed the Hell's Angels and Rock Machine, uh, as the, so they call them something else now. Uh, and that was one of the, the most violent branches of the Hell's Angels in history, is the Rock Machine. Uh, the, 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 even the Hell's Angels were like, whoa, those, those guys up there in Quebec are freaking nuts. They were just killing everybody. And this goes back to the biker wars during the 90s. Which, uh, but they, they've kind of went silent uh, because they've cracked down a lot on those guys. But those are kind of the same guys that are going to be moving into the nationalist groups in a lot of ways because they, you know, they're group-oriented to begin with. It doesn't mean they're all necessarily criminal. But you got the rise of uh, anti, you know, anti-Islam. Well, anti-Sharia is what it is, if you want to look at it for what it truly is. People don't care about peaceful Muslims who pray or whatever. Uh, but when they take up half of your street in France or wherever, wherever, I mean, I'm waiting for a French dump truck to go rumming, ramming through those guys. Not that I'm saying to do that, but again, don't be surprised when you see that. That will probably be the, you know, how the crusade battles will start. Now, if we see uh, more of what we've seen here in Canada, and the, the, the nationalist groups or uh, whatever are truly rising up throughout Canada, then yes, we are going to see people shooting people crossing the border. There's no doubt about that. And that could also constitute as the first crusade battles. Uh, once we start seeing ethnic cleansing on any level... That is the beginning of the crusade battles. Now, the reason why I'm not calling it a crusade battle on the other side is because th those are the invaders. It's when people fight back against the invaders, whether they're sweet and innocent, man, woman, or child, or fighting aged men, it doesn't really matter. That, that's not the formula you need to look at here. The, formula, the, the sentiment you need to look at is the idea of this culture is now clashing with that culture, and there's bodies on both sides. And when we have that, then we have the 10th Crusade. So right now, it's kind of... Canada's kind of fought back if we're going with the official story. But again, this guy could have done it for a million other reasons other than, his, than Islamophobia. So we don't know this. And I'm actually hoping that is the case. Uh, believe it or not, I actually don't want to see people beating each other over the head and killing each other in the streets. And the best way to avoid this is to wrangle, like right now, if Canada was to close its doors, cut off the welfare, practice self-deportation of the illegals, and legitimately... Uh, deport those who have broken the law the rest can stay the rest can stay and integrate but we got to get rid of things like blasphemy laws even though the blasphemy laws in Canada were more for Christianity that you couldn't criticize Jesus and stuff like that it, it's got to go it's we got to just get rid of blasphemy laws nothing in Canada in the westernized world if you believe in freedom of speech which the left does not they believe in freedom of speech, but that but meaning it's freedom of speech until you disagree with me. No, we need the freedom of speech. We need to be able to openly criticize Islam. We need to be able to draw the prophets if we want. We need to, be able to do whatever, because that's what a westernized country is allowed to do. If we make concessions to Islam, we will be under a one-world caliphate within a few generations or less. At the rate they're going, it could even happen with, like I say, within eight to ten years, we're going to have the culture clash. But I wouldn't be surprised if you see native groups basically start to really clash with these, uh, you know, especially when they, they start coming in in, in the hordes. 40,000 is a lot, but give another two years of 150,000 people coming in. Uh, and again, the Muslim, you know, you hear of all these, oh, we took the refugees skiing on the taxpayer's dime. All these PR things that Trudeau's doing with the refugees and stuff like that pisses every other Canadian off, especially when somebody just lost a loved one to, uh, you know, while they were dying waiting for treatment. That type of thing, you know, okay, well, uh, grandma, you know, can't, we can't find a hospital bed for her. But look, we took the refugees skiing. And oh, look, we took this person from the third world to give them an operation. we got to take care of our own first. And the thing is, is people see that, we're, you know, it, it, it's, it's, it's just the formula, the way it works, is that if you keep buttering up all these migrants and they're holier than thou and all these poor migrants and everything like that, uh, again, it... it creates such resentment against the, the, the immigrants, it's not funny. It actually builds into itself. Like, the left actually destroys its own argument, and that's why. Because it's not honest. It's not fair. And Canadians are very fair-minded people, but we also, again, with that tolerance meter, tolerance is out the window now, globally. Political correctness is out the window now, globally. I'm seeing people, again, most of my friends are leftists. I mean, that's just a thing in Canada. We tend to be very socialist-minded. Uh, maybe not like batshit crazy Sweden socialist-minded, but we're, we're okay, we, we believe in the, you know, the single-payer system for the health care, paved roads. Uh, we're okay with paying taxes, even a high amount of taxes, but not ridiculous. I mean, we're getting to the point of ridiculous. Uh, so that type of thing. So we do believe in a certain amount of government, stuff like that. We're different in that sense. But at the core of our, our old-stock Canadian and our Canadian value system, even though Trudeau doesn't recognize history of Canada before uh, 40 years ago before his dad, 
uh, and you know what is a Canadian? We know what a Canadian is. We know what old stock Canadians are. We know what the shield coat of arms is. We know how the country came to be. We know we we are you know basically subjects of the crown. We know we know that. We know we are indigenous people. We know who we are. A Canadian is a Canadian is a Canadian is not a true statement because that just dilutes what it means to be Canadian. Canadian is heritage, and it really pisses on the heritage of our country uh, when people just walk across the border just so they can get free stuff. Um, they're not coming from a, again, they're not coming from a country of persecution. Yes, you might politically not like Donald Trump, but if you're in that country legally and then think, okay, well, I'm in there illegally and they're going to kick me out, well, then that, you shouldn't be coming to our country because then you don't have a claim. And the way it works right now, when the United States, about 80% of their claimants that get refused, we accept. Uh, because of the Geneva Convention, uh, 1951 Geneva Convention, which I'll have to go look at that, but I just heard about it today on the, on the CBC with one of the immigration officers. So these are the things we have to look at. Again, we have Geneva Convention. We should not have anything to do with the Geneva Convention. Why would we have foreigners running our government? You know what I mean? Why would we be taking the mandates of the United Nations and all that stuff here in Canada? We don't need that. We don't need it. They do what's in the best interest of globalism. If they have good ideas, we can adopt those good ideas, but we don't need to basically be on their conventions. Uh, we need to have, be able to have autonomy rule, and that's one thing a Nationalist Party will get us. But the problem is, is that do we get to the Nationalist Party uh, before we start to see the, 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 the culture clash? I think we're going to see more culture clashes um, after a few more terrorist attacks or whatever. Uh, now, in Canada, they're trying to milk the sympathy for the Muslims, but it's actually it's backfiring. Because M103 came out so reactionary right after, uh, people are reacting more to that than they are to the mosque shooting. So what does that tell you? You know, oh, well, they're just all racist and bigots. Okay, well, fair enough. Let's say you're correct, uh, that everybody in Canada has just turned racist and bigot. Well, then wouldn't you not want to proceed with caution with, you know, saying, okay, well, everybody's riled up, everybody's mad at the, these migrants coming in and getting all this free stuff. And again, I'm looking at all these lefties on my, except for a handful of hardcore lefties, I'm starting to see people that were promoting, uh, you know, we've got to take in these refugees, all that. Now we're starting to see, the, as soon as you, they start coming across our border legally, oh, well, now it's an issue. You've got to stay consistent. I, it's been an issue for me right away. I'm okay with immigration to a degree, but right now we're full. We, we can't, you know, this idea, Ottawa, how, Ottawa now has a million people in it. And then we're like, oh, well, we need to expand transit, we need to expand. No, we need to stop immigration so we don't have to expand all that stuff. Government, making government bigger for the sake of making government bigger. And using mass immigration, the, the banking and the housing industry uh, to do this is just ridiculous. You know, it's ridiculous. And globalism, it's just ridiculous. It's not sustainable. Expand, 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 just so we can say we have 100 million people by the turn of the century. Complete ridiculousness. So I think we're going to see more violence against uh, refugees, particularly because of these border crossings, especially when the weather gets nicer and they start coming in in full force. Like we're talking like, you know, 20,000 people, 30,000 people. Uh, remember a couple of years ago when uh, the Tamils came in, boatloads of 500? And I think it was like uh, two boats or whatever, and like a boatload, about 500 people or whatever, uh, came over from India. People freaked out about that. And they oh, well, no, uh, we're, 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 uh, we're refugees, we're persecuted in our country, and half of them went back home to visit people. Well, people, that cost us four, $40 billion or $4 billion or something to take care of all these people. They were sick, they were, you know, whatever. And people were like, oh my God, they quarantined those people. Well, that's like the Japanese in World War II. Completely, you know, we've got to judge people by the context of the time. But considering what the Japanese did to their prisoners, trust me, that's not even an argument. You know, they were treated fairly well. You know, yes, it was bad, but we didn't know. During times of war, you got to quarantine people. Australia gets it. I don't know if they still do, but... Um, you know, you got migrants, yeah, detain them until you know who they are, man, woman, or child. Detain them until you know if they're, I mean, the idea of the RCMP grabbing these people at the border and then let, saying, okay, well, we're just going to let you go. We're going to give you a quick checkup and away you go. No, these people need to be detained for a long period of time until we know exactly where they come from, who they exactly are, vet them on the spot. Don't wait for a refugee hearing 10 months or whatever down the, no, do it now. We got to the point right now where, okay, the, the country's broke. Uh, Canada's broke. That's why we need to balance the budget so badly. Uh, Canada's broke, and we're at the point where we've got criminal cases, including murder cases, being thrown out because of a law that said uh, people have to be tried within a certain amount of time. And it's getting to the point where murder cases are getting thrown out because of the diversity laws of that Bill C-25 or Bill C-26, where you have to have gender and uh, you know ethnic parity because of United Nations Agenda 2030, where you have to have you know 50% women, 50% minorities, well, we're, we're short on judges. We, we need all these judges. And they, they can't do it because they can't find enough of the people to, to fit the quota. 
And because of that, there's a backlog in, in murder cases and everything like that, and violent crime, and they're getting thrown out. Good, good thing we take care of the victims. But under a liberal government, that's what you get, right? Now, was it the liberals that brought that law in? I don't know, so got to keep it fair. But still, they're in power now, change that law. You know, the, the statute of limitations doesn't run out on murder, meaning if it takes you a while to get all the evidence or put, you know, do whatever, you know, that's reasonable. That's reasonable. If somebody's accused of murder and you have them locked behind bars, okay, sure, you want to put those cases first. But, again, we're straining the system with people we can't take care of, taking money away from things that we should be putting it into. And it's just a, just, it's just a whole smorgasbord of fails throughout the government that, is, you know, it can't be sustained, and yet we're bringing more problems in. I'm not saying every person that's coming in is a problem, but if you can't vet them, don't bring them in. And if they're coming in illegally because they don't respect our borders enough, well, on that point, that, that's where I say no. They, these people, don't be crossing our borders. I'm telling you, it's not going to work out for you in the end. It might work out for you in the short run, but not in the long run. Within the third year, Trudeau is going to have major problems. Now, the timeline, again, until I get a confirmation of the actual motive of why this guy walked into the mosque and shot people, if it was actually him... But I am so suspicious that not because they, the storyline, but that the story has went away so quickly. I mean, Dawson College, they ran that one into the ground. Uh, Paul Colley Technique, they're still running that one into the ground. Uh, they don't stop talking about this stuff uh, if it's, you know, they, they, they have the upper ground. And right now, anything to prove people racist and bigot to create sympathy, they're going to do it. So the thing is, is why wouldn't they milk this one? Why aren't they talking about this guy and tearing this guy's every aspect of this guy's life apart? There's a reason why not. Now, mind you, uh, shortly after they said, well, he had links to Marine Le Pen and uh, uh, Donald Trump, they forgot to mention Jack Layton of the NDP, which the NDP in Canada, one of our political parties, is basically the Communist Party, so Communist Socialist Party, or Socialist Communist, to be fair. They're Socialist Communist. They're borderline Communist, but they're Socialist Communist. And they came in supported by communism at a time in the 1950s when it was illegal to be a communist uh, in Canada. Which, you know, I'm not against political ide ideology and stuff. And I understand liberty to a great degree, but under nationalist government, I would probably, yes, there's some authoritarianism that needs to come out. Number one, <laughs> fight communism at all costs. Yes, you can support communism as an individual, but we cannot recognize communism as a party. You know, but that has to come in from the mandate of the people. Uh, at the current level, any you can have any government you want. And I, I am, you know, worried about if you put limitations on one group, you can put limitations on another group. So I understand that's a debate that has to be had. But we see the infiltration of global globalism slash global communism, whatever. It's not even really socialism anymore because we can't we can't pay for the socialism. Uh, it, it's just becoming cultural Marxism and, and communism and, and just mass immigration. But immigration, I would believe, is our number one issue globally. It, 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 at this point, there's nobody not talking about it. And the people that I would, was, would normally watch on my Facebook putting up, oh, we got to you know, help the refugees, help the refugees. Help. Now they're kind of like, oh, maybe we should put Canadians first. You know, uh, grandma, need, grandma and grandpa needs, need their retirement uh, house. You know what I mean? The, they need to be taken care of. Uh, people don't want to be dying waiting for treatment in hospitals. Uh, yeah, we've got a long way to drop, don't get me wrong, but not that far. And... We're going to be in crisis very shortly. Well, we already tar are in crisis under Trudeau. It's just the optics of the defense system of the CBC is hiding that, and people are start but people will feel it. So it's the same problem they have in the States. The media could say whatever they want. Uh, they could talk about this fantastic economic recovery around the world, but mind you, the people are losing their retirements, they're losing their jobs, uh, they're underpaid. Uh, you, know, the, 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 you know, it's uh, like what they said in the Soviet Union. Uh, people pretended to work, and they uh, they pretended to work, and the people uh, people pretended to pay them, and they pretended to work. You know that that, and that's what we're working at here. The propaganda is just to the point where it's so unbelievable that it's like they've doubled down on the mainstream media lies, spins, or lie by omission. Right now, it doesn't matter what Donald Trump does; they're good. They, he could cure cancer and kiss little baby giraffes, and they would still hate him. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. It's just so there's no objectivity whatsoever. But while this you know, childishness of the mainstream media is going on. People are dying. Cars are burning in France. Stores are being damaged. People are being raped and murdered. And, and crime rates are going through the roof in Sweden and Germany and, and stuff like that. And the crime rates are even starting to go up here in Canada. And yes, it seems to be, um, you know, lot, not all migrants, but it, there seems to be a lot of crime amongst their faction too. They're starting to become a, a bigger representation. 
because we're not doing things properly or fairly. And Canadians, most of them are about fair, but when fairness leaves, uh, I mean, when does Louis Real 2.0 show up? You know what I mean? Like, that's, uh, that's what I'm thinking. I think in the native groups will probably be the first of the nationalist groups to, um, you know, natives are very, very nice people uh, and stuff like that. They're very, very open people to the point of where they get taken advantage of too. But they're also a very passionate people, meaning they can snap so fast. Uh, as a Canadian, I remember Oka. Um, you know, the FLQ crisis was a little bit before me, uh, but when Justin Trudeau, when they, he said, I can roll tanks, uh, you know, in this country, and we actually had martial law in this country, and they said, I, you know, you can't do that. And he said, watch me. Well, uh, you know, is Justin Trudeau going to be, you know, rolling tanks in Canada and say, just watch me? You know, and for what reasons? Is he going to roll tanks uh, like, uh, like Kretschier had to do uh, against the, the, the Oka Reserve? You know what I mean? Like, but picture Oka across the entire country, uh, particularly Manitoba. Like, I mean, the native groups down there, if they're watching all these migrants coming into their communities, uh, they're probably saying, okay, well, well, we'll take in a few, but a thousand showed up, you know, or 500 showed up in, a, in two weeks. Uh, they're going to, you know, the resentment is going to be there. Somebody on a snowmobile. Good day for it, anyway. Uh, but anyway, uh, I guess just to wrap up, uh, what's going on in France is, is, is out, of, out of control. What's going on here in Canada, we'll have to keep an eye on. I'm not calling for any violence, but I'm saying when you see it happen, don't be surprised. I do believe there will be an uprising against these migrants in Canada. Uh, I'm just, again, we have to wait and see what, what the true motive was. If the true motive was what uh, they say it is, the hunches, I'm actually thinking it probably is, then we're going to see more of it in Canada. And that means the migrants, well, you're about to get your asses majorly handed to you. Uh, Canadian politeness and political correctness, it, it can go out the window. Because people think, you know, they watch the CBC, and I'll just end here, but they watch the CBC and they think every Canadian's a pushover, but we're not. Uh, in fact, we're quite, uh, you know, fit in or fuck off types. Uh, so anyway, sorry for the language, but you get that. So anyway, I'll wrap it up. So uh, if you like this kind of content, please consider making a donation channel. Links down below. Uh, thank you so much everybody has. Thanks for that. Right, subscribe, share, comment, like. Be true to yourselves. Be true to others. Always, always do the right thing. And have yourselves a great day, eh? Hey, and welcome. Check out my hat. All right. So, 10th Crusade. I haven't done one of these in a while. Uh, I've been looking at what's been going on in France, and I guess uh, war it is then. Um, okay, so with what's going on in France, they basically got an election coming up with Marine Le Pen, and it looks like she's, they, they say she's going to take the first round. I'm not exactly 100% sure how French voting goes, but uh, she's, they say she's most likely going to take the first round, uh, and whatever, and there's a good chance she might take the second round, especially with all these Muslim riots that have been going on for the last past week. And they, these things flare up. You know, they pretty much go on all summer long throughout France. They burn cars, smash shops, or whatever. And that riots come in on, and it's not just the Muslims. They're, they're, it's the radical left. In France, like, everybody's very hypersensitive, it seems, and they riot about just about anything. Um, and they're going to be passing a law. They want to pass a law so that uh, police can basically open fire after two warnings on radical protesters that, you know, either are injuring people or whatever. So that means they're going to be shooting people dead in the streets. It means they're going to be shooting Muslims dead in the streets. And that's going to cause a civil war like that. Uh, there's no doubt about that. The other thing is, is that uh, the EU is trying to pass a law to allow all these migrants to vote. So basically, in the next election, that's what they'll use to overthrow Le Pen. But what the other option is, is that as soon as these police officers, I'm sure these police officers are like, yes, give us that right to shoot these people. You know what I mean? They're looking forward to it. They're going to do it. You know, uh, This riot came in. They said there was a bunch of French police that took down a migrant and they sodomized them with a belly bat or something like that. Now, whether this is true or not, I don't know. Um, but even so, protest is one thing. Destroy the city is another. Uh, again, something like 1,800 cars per year, between 600 and 1,800 cars per year are burnt by, in, by the Muslims in the Shri Nogo zones. And there's over 700 Shri Nogo zones, as they call them in the States. Uh, these are all pre predominantly Muslim people. Whether it has something to do with Sharia or not, it doesn't matter. It's a Muslim-dominated area. And these are basically very violent areas. The police can't go into them. They got them in, they got them in the UK. They got them, uh, uh, they don't really have them too much in Canada, but they're going to show up here too. Uh, and when they do, trust me, the Canadian public isn't going to tolerate that too long. Uh, we're different. We're a little bit different here in Canada. Um, you know, it's it just, uh, we're, we're, you know, we're not going to tolerate it too long. Uh, I, I just, my hunch feeling, my hunch, my hunch feeling. Um, the thing, and in Sweden, I, again, it's just as crazy. So, but getting back to France, like, it, it's just getting to the point where uh, if they can 
get martial law in. I mean, they're in a state of emergency. You've got police all over the place. They're building a, going to be building like a gate around the Eiffel Tower if they haven't built it yet, just in case of terrorist attacks. They've banned trucks at, at any sort of parades or anything like that. Basically, they did this here in New Year's Eve in Ottawa, and this is the first time in our history that we've had to do this, where they basically blocked off all the streets and blocked it with trucks so trucks couldn't get through so that terrorist attacks couldn't happen. Um, you know, it's to the point where, yeah, the crusade is about to start. I do think France will probably be one of the first areas where the crusade starts. Uh, the first crusader battle is basically when you have not so much the government, but the populace. Uh, you got Muslims on one side and patriots are on the other side of, of some sort. Uh, and basically, you're going to have a body count on both sides. And th those will be the first crusade battles. They haven't taken place yet, but I'm, you know... Pretty sure it's going to happen pretty soon. Uh, France, I don't think, can go much further. Uh, it's either fight back or be conquered. That, that's pretty much where they're at. Now, they are afraid of Le Pen winning because she wants to actually deport these people. And they should. They have, you know, every country should have the right to deport those who don't integrate or whatever. Um, and the thing about it is, it's very simple. If they can get the martial law, they can cancel the election. They can cancel the election, Marine Le Pen won't win. Now, what they did in the last one is they took the votes, the left took the votes, uh, and gave all their votes to Hollande so he would win. That way, otherwise, Le Pen probably would have won in the last election. So, it's kind of like, okay, fair enough. Uh, but once they do that, like once they go down that route, uh, and they go down the martial law route, uh, it won't matter anyway. There will be such rioting from all sides. At that point, you will have your civil war. Uh, it's pretty much, to me, and I don't think the French military and the French uh, police are going to stay on the side of the governments. I think, I've, you know, once those penguins start jumping off the iceberg, the rest are going to follow in pretty quickly, and, and you're going to see probably, you know, you know, basically a, a French military coup. I wouldn't doubt it. I think this is why Hollande is step, stepping down. He's like, I'm not running in the next election. Uh, I think that guy's getting ready to get, get out of Dodge, you know what I mean? Uh, because if they go to go to that route, at that point, it, it's the only alternative is war. Not that I'm calling for it, but I'm saying when you see it happen, don't be surprised. You know what I mean? Like it, you know, uh, it's the the governments around the world have failed everybody because of globalism, and you know, globalism it could have worked if they wouldn't have done the the, the, the mass. You can have globalism without mass immigration, but mass immigration can't be sustained anywhere. Uh, the argument there's no arguments for mass immigration. There are there are no arguments uh, other than the Democrats, the Democrats get voters for putting people on welfare and getting them addicted to welfare, and the right, the, the, the conservatives get cheaper labor. So that's the only reason why they want mass immigration. The people don't want mass immigration. They don't want to lose their culture. They don't want to lose, you know, they don't mind doing trade with other countries. That's fine, but they don't want to. They don't want to lose their country, their homelands. And that's, you know, that much. Mind you, this is done on purpose too. The migrant crisis pretty much comes on the heels of the globalists, which, you know, George Soros, Henry Kissinger, Zygmunt Brzezinski, Rothschilds, Rockefellers, uh, the 14 Jew major prominent Jewish groups out there, like the ADL and stuff like that, and uh, Southern Poverty Law Center, you have them. and So you see the Zionist faction of it, uh, the, uh, what's called the Israeli lobby, you see that they're all, you know, oh, we need more, uh, more mass immigration, more mass immigration, we've got to be welcoming to, you know, there's a difference between being welcoming, uh, and there's a big difference between uh, you know generosity and being taken advantage of. And right now, these migrants are taken advantage. Of. Oh, but they're just sweet innocent refugees. Obviously not. If the crime rates are shooting through the roof in Sweden, the rape epi epidemic there is just like they're raping people in the middle of the street in broad daylight. Uh, and then of course assaults are just you know through the roof. And this is happening everywhere in Europe. And the thing about this is is that you know. Again, when do the people snap? I, I think France is probably the canary in the coal mine in that sense. Uh, but I still say the big crusade battle takes place in the UK. Uh, here in Canada, I think we're just going to see a rise in xenophobic attacks. Uh, I think that's going to be the first one. Don't be surprised if you see, and I'm not calling for this, but don't be surprised if you see people getting shot at at the border. Uh, the, 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 I was holding off this uh, 10th Crusade video until I got more information of the story that just kind of seemed to have went away. Um, I talked about the Polytechnique uh, massacre back in the 1989, uh, I believe it was 89, where the guy walked into a Polytechnique, uh, Ecole Polytechnique and massacred 14 women and, you know, wounded a whole bunch of others. And that, they, they drink, they, they, every year they have a vigil, they, they, they 
you know, the, the anti-gun control, the anti-the gun control lobby in Canada is pretty much spearheaded by them. Uh, 